Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Van Aid. Thank you for coming. You guys are awesome. Let's all give each other a hand for being here. Hey everybody, what's up? Well, good morning. I just woke up here at Van Aid in Quartzsite, Arizona. We're gonna go outside, take a look around, see what uh, see what's popping. So the way things work over here at Van Aid is that there's tables set up. One has sewing, one has mechanical, the other has electrical, and the other one has carpentry on it. And whatever need you have, you just go to that table and hang out by it and talk to people and try to get that uh, need met. If you don't have a need and you have a skill, you also hang out by the corresponding table and then uh, you know, you'll know you be able to uh, offer help to people to uh, get them and their projects taken care of. So we're gonna show you exactly what it looks like over here. It's made with uh, it's made with uh, I would suggest. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, so I'll be here. All right. Well, check out the idea. All right. So let's do me, right? Um, and, you know, talk about it some more. I would I I spoke with the guy, the mechanic guy, you know. Yo, yo! You're a peeping Tom. You're a peeping Rye. What's up, buddy? <laughs> this is awesome. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Can you pet him? Hey, buddies. Hi. Is it okay to pet him? I heard, I heard they came Bye. for the vegan thing because they still sell safe over <laughs> <laughs> Hi, buddy. Hi. Um, we haven't Aww. started yet, but talk to these guys. Hey. We'll get you. <laughs> wow. That is awesome. <laughs> I've never been this close to a cow. Yeah, I've been kind of this close to cows, but wow. These are so like nice and well behaved. <laughs> They're so cute. He really should be charging to take pictures. Right? Do it again. Do it again. They're ox. They are ox. Really? So they're Australian low line ox or low line tangies. I got the embryos in Australia. I got the semen in Washington State, and I ran it to their cows to carry them. Ah, really? Yeah. Specimens. Wow. Genetically inside. Wow. So they should be inside. Who do they think alike, though? No. No, exactly. And they're not the same size. No. Another thing that I thought was going to happen here was it was a deep, it was a deep, it was a deep, it was supposed to be exact. Right. Yeah. I'm Tile. Thank you for coming to Van Aid. Thank you very much. Hey, Kyle. Hey, Kyle. Um, this is our night of celebration, and boy, is there a great program for you tonight. Um, thank you also, most especially, for your willingness to help each other <clears throat> doing work, because it's amazing how much work I've done. 
amazing. Um, and, and it was despite any real organization by me at all. I just pointed everybody, oh, let's try this and this and this, and all right, go ahead and do it amongst yourselves. And sure enough, a whole lot of stuff got done. We have amongst us a, a nomad for decades who's a storyteller who uh, lives in New England and goes around telling stories to all these camps and stuff like that. So he knows hundreds of stories. Papa Joe, say hi, Papa Joe. Papa Joe. He's going to regale us a number of times throughout the evening. As soon as I'm done talking here, he's going to tell a story. And then every time we switch to the band, he's going to tell a story. And that's about four stories. So uh, then after that, we have um, Stefan and Marty. Who Stefan is also. Hey. All right. So on with the fucking show. Let's give us all a hand. Woo! I'm going to start the night off with, with the most requested story at the uh, Northern New England Festival. So if they liked it, I'm, I'm hoping you will like it too. It's called The Gruffalo, and it was written by a woman named Julia Donaldson over in England. And she wrote it for children. She wrote a picture book. She wrote a lot of picture books, but most of them are picture books. And, you know, if you don't have the picture, then you don't have the story. But this one is kind of cool. It's about a little mouse. A little mouse who takes a walk in the forest and, um, well, you know about mice. Everybody wants to eat them. A mouse took a walk through the deep, dark woods. A fox saw the mouse and the mouse looked good. He said, where are you going to, little brown mouse? Come, have lights in my underground house. Well, the mouse didn't like that idea. Um, hey, oh. it's wonderfully kind of you, Fox, but no, because I'm having lunch with a Gruffalo. A Gruffalo? What's yeah. a Gruffalo? A Gruffalo, why, didn't you know? He has terrible tusks and terrible claws and terrible teeth in his terrible jaws. Where are you meeting him? Uh, down by those rocks and... His favorite food is roasted fox. Roasted fox? Oh dear, fox said. Goodbye, little mouse. And away the fox fled. Silly old fox, doesn't he know there's no such thing as a gruffalo? <laughs> On walked the mouse through the deep dark woods. An owl saw the mouse, and the mouse looked good, he said. Where are you? Going to a little brown mouse. Come have tea in my treetop house. It's terribly kind of you, owl, but no. I'm having tea with a gruffalo. A gruffalo? What's a gruffalo? A gruffalo, I didn't you know? He's got knobby knees and turned out toes. A poisonous what on the end of his nose? Where are you meeting him? Down by the stream, and his favorite food is owl ice cream. Owl ice cream? To it to woo. Goodbye, little mouse. And away the owl flew. Silly old owl, and doesn't he know there's no such thing as a gruffalo? Oh, you learned that. On walked the mouse through the deep dark woods. A snake saw the mouse and the mouse looked good. He said, where are you going to, little brown mouse? Come, have a feast in my log pile house. It's wonderfully kind of you, a snake, but no, cause I'm having a feast with a gruffalo. A gruffalo? What's a gruffalo? A Gruffalo, why didn't you know? His eyes are orange, his tongue is black, and there are purple prickles all down his back. Where are you meeting him? Down by the lake, and his favorite food is scrambled snake. Scrambled snake, it's time I hid. Goodbye, little mouse. And away the snake slid. Silly old snake, and doesn't he know there's no such thing as a Bravo. Uh oh. Who 
is this creature with the terrible claws and the terrible teeth and his terrible jaws. His knob knees are knobby. It turned out toes and a poisonous wart on the end of his nose. His eyes are orange. His tongue is black and there are purple prickles all down his back. Uh-oh. It's a Garoppolo. My favorite food, the Garoppolo said. You'll taste good on a slice of bread. Good? Good? Don't call me good, cause I'm the scariest creature in the deep dark woods. You just follow me, and soon you'll see everybody's scared of me. <laughs> Oh, sure, said the Gruffalo, bursting with laughter. You walk ahead, I'll follow after. Well, they walked and they walked till the Gruffalo said, I hear a hissing in the grass ahead. That snake, said Mouse. My snake, hello. The snake took a look at the Gruffalo. Uh-oh. I hear a mouse. And he slid right into his log pile house. See, said the mouse, I told you so. Amazing, said the Gruffalo. Well, they walked and they walked till the Gruffalo said, I hear some hooting in the trees ahead. That owl, said mouse. Well, hello. I'll take a look at the Gruffalo. To wit to work, eh? Goodbye, little mouse. And he flew right up to his treetop house. See, said the mouse, I told you so. Astounding, said the Gruffalo. <laughs> well, they walked and they walked till the Gruffalo said, I hear some footsteps on the path ahead. That's Fox, said Mouse. Hi, Fox, hello. Fox took a look at the Gruffalo. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, bye, little mouse. And he fled right into his underground house. Well, said the mouse, now you see, cause everybody's scared of me. <laughs> but now my tummy is starting to rumble, and my favorite food is Gruffalo Crumble! Gruffalo Crumble, the Gruffalo said, and as fast as the wind he turned and fled. All was quiet in the deep dark woods. The mouse found a nut, and the nut was good. <laughs> the Gruffalo by Julia Donaldson. You guys have a great time tonight. We got a lot of great music coming. I hope you have a wonderful time. Oh, I know you have a wonderful time. I'll see you all in just a little bit. My name is Stefan, and this is Marty. We've been here for about a week. We came from a schoolie, or a uh, school of Palooza, and then we found out about this wonderful place, and now we're here and we're getting to share the time with you guys. So let's make some noise for this beautiful event, right? Come on. So uh, my name's Stefan. I've been on the road for about five years, and uh, Marty's joined me a few months back. She's full time now. She's really four months. <laughs> I'm still figuring out, <laughs> figuring out how to live in my van. We hit the road and we started writing some music together and we decided, you know, let's keep doing this. Uh, and in uh, Colorado, we came up with a song, one of our first songs, and we'd like to share that with you today.
Uh, the first time that I got in my van, it was four months ago. I had my things in trash bags, everything that I owned that I hadn't, I sold everything else. And I just drove as far as I could from home. Uh, I'm from the East Coast, West Virginia, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. And I'm so happy to be here. It's been like a super lonely uh, journey so far, but coming to this has been the most community I've ever had. And just watching everybody take care of each other has been the most beautiful thing. Thank you all for being here. Yeah. She's been awesome being on the road together. It's been really fun. Um, this next song is another original tune of ours. We actually finished it here. It's really cool to bring this to life in front of you guys, with you guys as a family. So thank you all for being here. Thank you. Oh, can I, intro can I tell you guys what this is about? This song's about um, not being able to communicate well in relationships and <laughs> just trying to say things through body language and just feeling misunderstood. Um, this is called Watchtower. <laughs> desert so I know we all have a reason to run away um, and my reason was because I got my heart ripped out um, but while I was at the desert in the desert I wrote the song about how my heart is in the desert um, that's been changing a lot since I've met you all and is my mic buzzing a little bit no. No, you're hello so clean to me. cool Perfect. thanks um, yeah so it's it's changed a lot so in my bridge I wrote um, I realize only the toughest can survive, so I thrive in this, in this desert.
I'm not looking for some over dramatic. I'm not romantic. I can't stand it. I just reminisce the way I was hurt. Hurt sinking balls of loving and leaving. I can't stand all other reasons that my heart feels like a desert. A desert, baby. My heart feels like a desert. Why? Because nothing is thriving here. Oh, 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 no. Nothing is thriving here. Oh, oh, oh no. You think you've got me figured out lately. You don't know how you're getting under my skin. Romantic, I can stand it. I just reminisce the way I was hurt. Hurt, thinking about some loving and leaving. I can't stand all of the reasons that my heart feels like a desert. Beautiful, huh? And we have a lot more to come. But um, I wanted to share a story that I actually wrote. I, I wrote this story for a woman up in Michigan who was having. Yay, Michigan! Yeah, she had an unfortunate relationship with a man. And for some reason, she thought that all men should die. I, I guess it happens sometimes. Any, any women agree? But um, I, I wanted to reassure her that not all men are, 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 are bad. Um, some of us, some of us are, are, are kind and thoughtful and caring and we like chocolate too. So I wrote her a chocolate story and since it's almost Valentine's Day, I, I'd like to share this one with you. You want louder? They, they, they'll work on that. And I'll try to keep the microphone in my face. So um, yes. For Valentine's Day, is my chocolate man. Once there were two brothers, and they were as different as apples and elephants. <laughs> and when they grew up, they were more different still. Now the first brother, the older brother, he was really good at planning, and I got nothing against planning, but this guy planned things to death. And Almost everything he planned to do had to do with him making a lot of money. So he made a lot of money, but he didn't have much fun. And the second brother, the younger brother, he was really good at sharing. He would have been really good here. Yeah, some people, mostly his older brother, said that he shared more than he had, but he only shared what was his, so that couldn't be true, right? And uh, while he didn't make much money, he had lots of fun. And his old lady said to him that, he would read aloud to her on lazy Sunday afternoons and by a fire on a cold winter's night that he'd wrap his arms around her, even in public sometimes. 
left her alone sometimes too. He did it all. He listened, he spoke, he read, he wrote, he thought, he felt, he, he smiled, he loved, he was, and... One day when he was leaving his lady friend alone for a little while, somebody else did some sharing and he ended up with a 10 pound chunk of chocolate. And as it was a warm day, he slipped that chocolate up under his hat and headed for home. Now there wouldn't be a story if something didn't happen. But what happened? It was kind of hard to believe, you know, he's walking along, he sees this big old boulder. You don't have a lot of them out here, but where I come from, there's a lot. And this is a really big old boulder that cast a big shadow, and he was thinking as he's walking by in the hot sun that maybe if he rested in the shade of that big old boulder, it would cool off a little bit. So he did. He sat down in the shade of that big old boulder and fell asleep. Well, the sun moved. He didn't. Hat didn't move, but the chocolate did. It melted down his face, down the back of his neck. It melted down and down till he was covered from head to toe in chocolate. Think he woke up then? Nope. Well, the sun went down and the moon came up and that warm day turned into a cold night. Chocolate hardened up. And there he was, sitting like a big old chocolate Santa Claus. Oh, you like that, huh? <laughs> Think he woke up? No. Well, it got really late and suddenly the boulder cracks open and out comes a family of goblins. And, and, and those little goblin kids excited to see a chocolate man sitting right out there in front of their front door. <laughs> that goblin mama, she says, no chocolate till after supper. So they picked him up, carried him inside. <laughs> well, they went off to find some supper. <laughs> a good thing for that boy. The goblin house was warm and the chocolate softened up and pretty soon he could run on home. Yeah, wasn't his lady friend happy to see him? Not just because she loved him, but she got to eat all that chocolate off him. <laughs> and that was when they found the golden coins. Whole bunch of them stuck to his... Well, must have happened when they put him down in that goblin house. But anyway, now he did have some money. And when the first brother, the older brother, heard about the uh, chocolate and the goblins and the gold, yeah, you know, he started planning. And since this had to do with him making lots of money, he put it right into effect. Went downtown, bought himself a 10-pound chunk of chocolate, slipped it up under his hat, headed off for home. When he got to that boulder, he sat down in the shade of that big old boulder, and he didn't move. The sun moved. He didn't move. Hat didn't move, but the chocolate did melt it down his face, down the back of his neck, it melted down and down till he's sitting there, covered from head to toe in chocolate. And then the sun went down and the moon came up and that warm day turned into a cold night. Chocolate hardened up, now he's sitting there just like his brother was. Big old chocolate Santa Claus. It got really late and the boulder cracked open and out came that family of goblins and weren't those little goblin kids excited to see another chocolate man sitting out in front of their front door. And this time the goblin mama, she says, we ain't letting this one get away. Think he moved then? Nope. Chocolate's too hard. He's scared stiff. And the first thing they did, bite off his head. Well, the second brother, the younger brother, he lived happily ever after. And his old lady said to him that he would read aloud to her on lazy Sunday afternoons and by a fire on a cold winter's night that he'd wrap his arms around her, even in public sometimes. Left her alone sometimes too. He did it all. He listened, he spoke, he read, he wrote, he thought, he felt, he loved, he smiled, he was. And once in a while, he brought his lady home some chocolate. <laughs> the Chocolate Man by Papa Joe. Hey, thank you very much. <laughs> we got a lot more stories coming up, so I'm into a lot more songs too. You guys have a great night. So we've been here throughout the duration of Van Aid in Quartzsite, Arizona, and we are about to leave today. We have to go up to Northern California. We're helping our friend farm sit her property. She's going to be out of town, so we're going to take care of it for a little while. We're about to get on the road, head up toward Northern California, and uh, got to say goodbye to all our friends. Not really goodbye, but see you later at least.
Cosmic Storm in the galaxy actually has, um, she has a, a, a pool. She has, <laughs> she says she only has to fill it up. Good. Now you can just come over like and we can thank you for getting our projects done. <laughs> <laughs> the real, the real star. Oh my gosh, what is that? You, mm. Lily, you're ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I should do your outro. <laughs> <laughs> So we just woke up. We're here at a rest stop in California, about four hours south of Sacramento. 
And uh, we're heading up to Northern California right now. We just left Van Aid. Van Aid was a great event. We had a great time. But it's time to do a little farm, farm sitting, have some isolation and some peace, and uh, relax a little bit, just chill. So we're about to get on the road. It's about 7.30 in the morning. This wasn't the most quiet spot to sleep. We have the highway on one side. We have the train on the other side, but uh, it was a long drive, so we didn't do it at all in one day. It was over 10 hours. So yeah, we're about to get out on the road and get going up to Northern California, one of our favorite places to be. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> 